and welcome to the Series 11 panel discussion. And today we're talking about Resolution, the New Year's special. And uh, today I have Jacob. Hi. Harry. Fuck off. And Jerry. James Blake, the hero. And uh, we do not condone on this channel that James Blake is a hero. He's in fact a martyr. Uh, a god amongst men. But... <laughs> yeah... <laughs> So, um, aside from that, uh, Resolution, the New Year's special. What do we think of it? Let's start off with what we thought of Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor in this story. Do you want to start, Jerry? Can I be completely honest? Of course you can be completely honest. <laughs> oh, I just see when she... Like, most of it, like, all of her non-serious performances in it are fine, right? I think she's completely likeable. But see when she tries to be threatening and angry, especially in this one, considering what's at stake... She just looks like a pissed off eight year old who has been told she's no getting ice cream. <laughs> That's hilarious to watch. I, I, is that are you being sexist, Jerry? <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, completely. I, don't know, I kind get... of have the opposite opinion of that because I don't <laughs> mind her when she's being serious, but when she's trying to be non-serious, being like quirky, I just find it irritating and not very funny. You know? Nah, Dylan, D- Dylan, sorry, mate. I'm going to have to side with Jerry. Less annoying than Matt Smith, but still annoying. <laughs> right. um, I get the feeling you're talking about. It's like it's like she's trying to do a David Tennant impression when she's trying to be quirky and that. But I, the, for the most part, I think that's Well, the, the thing is, uh, D- uh, David Tennant was trying to do a Tom Baker impression. Well, not quite, but, you know, all of, like a lot of doctors are trying to like take all their cues from Tom Baker because he was the most successful doctor, arguably. And I feel like they keep on trying to replicate that success. And with David Tennant, maybe it didn't work for me, but it worked for most people. And then they tried it again with Matt Swift, they tried it again very specifically with Peter Capaldi, and they've tried it again with Jodie Whittaker. Just very quirky, very mad. I, I don't know, uh, Brian was the one who first brought it up, and I kind of agreed with it. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't think it works with her. Uh, no, 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 the, no, the, com- the comedic bits where she's like, like not like taking the piss in that, it's all fine. Then she tries to be serious, and I just feel like she's at least <laughs> perfect on the fucking planet. It's, I feel like, I feel like that ridiculous. fucking that Colin Baker meme that I said she's all day when it's fucking him with a microphone saying "Get out, little child." No, <laughs> goodbye. I don't have any well, idea what you're talking about, Jerry. Really? Well, oh. well, you know. Well, her her serious bits are not really helped by the fact that the fucking monster. Don't take her seriously either. He just fucking ignores everything she says as well. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, actually. It barely reacts to what she uh, says. She's just so non-threatening, just trying to be serious. It's just like. <laughs> I think like, here's the like, thing. I feel you... like Jodie Whittaker as an actress would be much better with a serious role. Yeah. Yeah. I think you are right. She didn't particularly act it that well in this episode. Maybe it's because you're trying to be serious. In a role where she's largely trying to be lighthearted, yeah, uh, which is what kind of garbles it up. But I feel she'd make a much better serious Doctor given her previous acting history. I don't know if you've seen anything else with Jodie Whittaker in uh, Broadchurch, mm. yeah, Black Mirror as well. And that's about the gist of it, to be honest. Yeah, so well, well that's my view. Anyway, uh, what do you think, Jacob? Since you haven't spoke yet. Um... I have to echo what you said. Like she she can do serious pretty well. Like um, even in this episode, um, by like the final scene in the TARDIS, you really see the fear in her face. But just a lot of the goofy stuff. It feels kind of like season twenty four Sylvester McCoy. <laughs> that is the perfect analogy, Jacob. I think and, you've and, got and it. There. I, I love Sylvester McCoy, but fuck season twenty four Sylvester McCoy because it's, it's not it, really a character. It's look at me, I'm a quirk. <laughs> Yeah, it's just slapstick, pretty much. Well, at least in season 24. What are you talking about? There's loads of symbolism, like in Dragonfire, when he climbs down the, the cliff willingly. It's symbolism. It's, fo- it's foreshadowing <laughs> for when... It's foreshadowing for when Doctor Who itself just fucking takes a... Takes a it's Doctor Who willingly throwing back. himself off the cliff. <laughs> That's season 24. You're, you're... You 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 only know, you only know what, this, what this episode should have had from season 4? Should have had some cunt's fucking face melt. <laughs> <laughs> would have made it better, not going to lie. 
Yeah, so uh, is there anything else about Jodie Whittaker's doctor in this episode, or is that it? Uh, um, her costume is a bit fucking stupid, but oh, yeah. yeah. Harry <laughs> hasn't seen any of Series 11, so this was his first Series 11 episode. And yes, her costume is stupid. <laughs> yeah. And the scarf doesn't help it at all. Really? I thought the scarf actually kind of was a minor, minor, very minor improvement. No, I right, mean, no, all, 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 all I could think was, right, I looked at her, and it's like, it's fine, it's fine, up till you get to her fucking ankles, because she's not wearing really <laughs> fucking no, She's well, not wearing any socks. Are you fucking Victorian, Harry? Can't stand the same no, 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 I haven't reached my fucking point yet, Dylan, shut the fuck <laughs> up. Oh, those ankles, no. oh, oh, it's too sexual. <laughs> Yeah, I, I get a crack of raging burner every time I see a fucking wide shot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there go on, Harry. Quality. Yeah, but but she's not really fucking dressed for being running around in the fucking wherever she's running around, is she? Like a fucking shoe. She get she get fucking mad like fucking pains in her fucking shins. She's walking around <laughs> in them fucking. Uh, I suppose why that spider monster doesn't really take her seriously every time she's got the big <laughs> angry face on it's just like eh, it's like, like somebody who's dressed up in their mum's pyjamas like, yeah, what, what, what I said about uh, all, all the way back when it was revealed and like in the uh, fam- earlier panel discussions is that it looks like some uh, college students art project not like you know something the doctor would wear particularly mm-hmm and honestly, it look- I, I think it looks more ridiculous than Colin Baker's outfit. And I know a lot of people will think, oh, that's ridiculous, but I, I genuinely do. And I know Colin Baker's outfit does look ridiculous, but there's just something about the clothes here, which just to me personally is just like, what the fuck are you wearing? It looks horrible. Don't you use ridiculous anymore, Dylan? Like the word? Yes, I could. I could make every word ridiculous, but I didn't. That's ridiculous. Exactly. I know this is related to the panel discussion, but I just want to say this drink has got way too much vodka in it. I'm going to put some more lemonade in it. He's Fuck also you. an alcoholic. Anyway, let's move on to the companions in this episode. Would you like to start, Jacob? Um, I didn't feel anything for Ryan in this episode. Like, they they didn't exactly... Chibnall didn't really write him with an arc. It was like, he's going to make up with his dad because... Well, I mean, to be fair to to Chibnall, because I am going to shit on this later, but to be fair to him on that front, it was built up throughout Series 11. It was. It just, it it felt like Ryan's character, Ryan's storyline just felt kind of like the way it just appeared in the episode sort of came out of nowhere and was resolved way too quickly. Like... Well, here's the thing. I thought it was actually quite well built up because they didn't have long rambling scenes about it. Uh, in earlier episodes. It was just kind of mentioned in passing. It was show, don't tell, for the most part, and I thought it was handled quite well. Whereas here, I don't think it was handled as well. because Uh, No, I'm I'm talking about this episode specifically. I feel like... like, Oh, yeah, it was poorly handled this episode. Just because it came... uh, Such a... uh, How would I describe it? It's like kind of... They've shoved an episode of EastEnders into the episode Dalek. That's what this episode feels like. And it's because there's so many long, rambling scenes with just exposition about this. There's very little, um, you know, showing, and there's just lots yeah. of telling. And I don't think it's very I good writing. And I was broke just... the tension of, like, a lot of the other scenes with yeah. uh, I know. I mean, what's her who face. Gives, who gives a shit about somebody's dad when there was literally an alien murdering police officers in the scene before? Yeah, like, I just, like... I just want to... I, can, can I also bring up the fact that it's just so convenient that he came to the door at the exact moment they landed and in the space oh, well, where they actually stayed in at the house. many episodes in Doctor Who. I think we can let that one go. Yeah, that's... No, so, no sorry, this is a hill I'm dying on. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you um, could be fucking stabbed to death on it. I right? think... Um, yeah. I think. Um, the, I, I the... like that we actually had to give Yaz something to do to remind us that, oh, right, wait, 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 she's wait, a police she? officer. I don't yeah, remember she was doing like, oh, She took no, down no, no, the oh, people's oh, yeah. information. And co- followed up like a police officer. No, no, but... I, I saw a good tweet which said that, um, you, who was the woman who uh, was taken off by a Dalek, whatever her name was, um, they said she <laughs> has done more pretending to be a police officer in this series than Yaz has. <laughs> yeah, um... Like, like, no, 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 you know the worst, like, like, there's three companions, and it's like, obviously, some of them don't get fuck all to do, because, and it's Yaz apparently, seeing as I haven't seen any of the other Oh, well, yeah, she doesn't get but, anything to do in any episode, Harry. It's not just but, this one. But, 
But by the end of the episode, they come out the TARDIS in that fucking communication place. There's like 50 fucking people in, like stood in front of it behind this fucking shield. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, like, I've, I've kind of noticed Chibnall does seem to like having a lot of people in the TARDIS, and with, maybe not so much with this episode because it was a bit longer, but with a lot of episodes, there's just not enough time for that. And in this yeah. episode, actually, there wasn't enough time for it just because he spent so long on um, the Ryan's, Ryan's dad. dad. Yeah, with having, you know, massively long scenes just sitting around talking about this, you know? Also, Graham yeah, is still I, the emotional centre of the episode because... Oh, Graham's all of, the best even, character. <laughs> yeah, like in all of his scenes, even with the scenes with Ryan's dad, you really feel like, hey, I'm gonna give you a chance. It, it felt more natural than it did with like the rest of it. Um, that might just be Bradley Walsh. Yeah, it's just the, Bradley the, the, Walsh, pretty much. The, the stuff with that lad's dad, like, didn't even come into play into the episode, like, as the whole entire story, of the episode, until the end when he saves him, but. It I mean, would have worked. It would have worked just as well as if it the, the Bradley Walsh were taken over by the Dalek, and he was just trying to save Bradley Walsh. Oh, it would have worked better because in the yeah. series we've 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 built up the art the character arc between those two characters, uh, having a really good climax. Uh, in and, it takes you away. And in this episode, it felt like they tried to focus on so many different things, but none of it works. Yeah, talking I about, I think, I think the way they defeated the Dalek with a microwave oven was fucking superb. You yeah, about, it, definitely, was, it definitely was, wasn't completely rushed. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I think that um, the the including Brian's dad in this episode could have been. It was totally unneeded. It was just an excuse to get the to get the microwave oven into there. All the scenes there, was just, <laughs> it was just set up in the microwave oven. That was the real hero of the. Really? Actually, why would think... the Dalek be destroyed by a microwave oven? Because they are creatures that have already dealt with like radiation, like well, uh, stronger they, they, radiation. They gave than... some techno babble as to why it was, but you know, I mean, again, which... again, there's a lot of convenience and techno babble in Doctor Who, so I'll let that one slide as well. But I mean, at least can... in that regard, but I won't let it slide in the regard that it was just completely rushed. You know, can can we just talk about how fucking retarded the Dalek looked? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, like, they, like, they, like, could done, like, like, they could have done so much with this, like a Dalek made purely from scrap. They could have got like you know somebody a bit artsy and got like some really cool design with like you know like a whisk on the end or something like that. You know where it just looks completely scrap homemade and really interesting and cool. But instead, no, it's just a shittier looking version of the same fucking Daleks we've had for ten years. I think I think the best way to describe it as is like. Some Chinese manufacturing companies like, okay, we need to make a dog. We need to make a dog. <laughs> we need to be able to sell it, but it can't look as much like a Dalek because it'll get sued. So we'll just make it look a bit like a Dalek, but we'll just make it look really fucking stupid. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's the copyright safe Dalek. That is it, what it, I call it from now on. It, it also. Oh, and if anyone also, says that, if anyone says that you're wrong for criticizing it because it's a one-off appearance. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah, well, yeah, the that, reason that, I'm that, criticizing that, it that, is because they could have done so much more. It was actually, I thought it was a really brilliant and fun idea to do that with the Dalek. It, it's it's a really they, good idea. They messed it up by just having the plot almost entirely focus on bloody Ryan's dad in a really ham-fisted way, and then having the design of the homemade Dalek just look shit. Yeah, well, it's, you know what? If, if they say that you can't criticise it because it's one-off appearance, look at, what's that fucking Christmas Top 2 episode with the Cybermen? The, you know, <laughs> the, the next Doctor. Right? They, they make a big fucking Cyber Godzilla or whatever the fuck that is. And it looks fucking <laughs> stupid. That looks retarded, doesn't it? And we all, and everyone says, oh, that looks fucking retarded. No one said shite about that, did they? Uh, actually, a lot of people do uh, like that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I disagree. Wrong. I don't like it. But, um, I need that. I need... but uh, shall we move on to uh, the side characters now? I mean, I suppose we've already talked so, about uh, Ryan's uh, dad uh, to an extent. We're right. going to talk about the other non-entities in this. I don't know. I'm going to I... talk about the Dalek again later because I've got yeah, one thing yeah, I want to brush up on. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, no, it's all right. We'll move on to the Dalek afterwards, even though we've kind of already touched upon it. But anyway, yeah, side okay. characters. Um. I'd, I'd say uh, Lynn, they, the woman who was taken over by the Dalek, is probably the best side character, yeah, she, mainly she because... Bad. Yeah, she was probably the best, because she 
you really felt for her. Like the relationship oh. that establishes what it was mm. the, cring- the cringiest thing I've ever seen. Oh yeah, that that was but, shit. Uh, that was shit. But I feel like they did do a decent was, was, job. Was that the... a we're was that a we're mates kiss? Yeah, no, that was yeah. that was horrible. I really didn't like that. Bit. Yeah, but... and, that, and then and then. The... And then the minute I saw that, I was like, okay, something bad's going to happen to one or both of these characters. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but, instant flag. But, but, but I also knew that the woman would probably be more, more of a substantial character than the man, because I actually had seen the actress in something before, and she's an established actress. So I was like, okay, so they've brought her on. I have no idea who the actor playing he, him, that fucking guy is, so probably won't be him. I think you're just being racist, Harry. I'm not being racist because... (laughs) I'm not racist. I've got plenty of Indian friends, actually. (laughs) (laughs) My best friends are Chinese. Yeah, uh, anyway, as I was was saying, yeah, the stuff with those two characters' relationships was a bit... uh, But I did quite like... uh, It was at least handled decently, I mean, um, because in a conflict she had with the Dalek. Although I feel they could have explored it in a lot more detail. In fact... That would have been a much more interesting thing to do with the episode, because it is a great concept, having a Dalek kind of stuck outside of its case and having to, you know, work its way through and rebuild itself. But they didn't really do yeah, much of it. Yeah, and yeah. if they hadn't had Ryan's dad subplot, they could have done so much with this really good idea. But instead it's just been kind yeah, of well, wasted. We could have done I, I so thought, much I, if we had... No, you go, Harry. There you go. I saw it, and I was like, wow, that's a really, really good concept. And then about halfway in the episode, he just gets back in the Dalek. I was like, oh... That shit. Well, that was just wasted. Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't even be that bad if you know it was if you know it wasn't more than just what ten minutes devoted to that instead of it was more like the, the entire thirty minutes devoted to lady being taken over by the Daleks. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. I've, I've I've got this. This is how you can make the episode better. Okay. So he does, the Daleks get back in his shell. He can, he he's contr- he controls the woman throughout the entire episode. So they control the woman and they figure out that oh wait we can't get the Dalek off her without killing her. So the only way to kill the... And the only... But if the, she dies, then the Dalek dies. So then you've got the boyfriend or whatever the fuck he is, and you've got and you've got him, and he's forced to kill her. Then you've got a much more interesting conflict at the end of the story. Yeah, I can kind of see that. But yeah, there's plenty of ways you could take it. You could Plenty of ways you could make this really interesting, but... No, no, you have to <laughs> have to focus on some soapy bullshit about Ryan's dad. I'm, I'm not saying they, sh- you know, necessarily shouldn't have had an episode of Ryan's dad because it was something that we're kind of building up. But there's better ways of doing it than the way they handled it. Rather, because it's better to do it in a kind of more it's incidental to the episode rather than barging its way on to an episode which has an interesting concept which barely gets explored because uh, the majority, well, not the majority of the runtime, but just. Too much of the runtime is devoted to this whole ride. Do it, do it more like what they did with Rory's dad back in Series 7. Yeah, yeah. That's surprisingly, Both that was actually handled written. really well, despite the fact that it was Series 7. Both written by Chris Chibnall. Yeah. So Chibnall yeah, yeah, can do it. Point. Yeah, Chibnall can do it. And he proved last series, actually, for the most part, with characters and you know, character development. So I thought he handled it really well. So it confuses me how he's managed to mess it up so much in this episode to the point where it's kind of uh, almost ruined what could have been really really good it could have been a really good uh, new year special but sadly uh not quite oh and and the other thing is it didn't have a whole lot to do with new years it just yeah, happened yeah, yeah, but on who, new yeah, year who cares about that i mean i, I think yeah, i, I think I, we've, I we've think been begging for the criticism we, we that's, can... that's not We've been yeah. begging for, like, the kind of holiday specials, you have to say that because now it includes New Year, to not be to do with the holiday, because all the Christmas specials were always about Christmas, and it was always just like, oh, for God's sake, you know, yeah, <laughs> you've yeah, run out of yeah, ideas you, what to do with this, you know? Yeah, yeah, but you could have done something like, what What was it with the the TV movie, where it's like a countdown to the New Year's? That, is wasn't, when that wasn't shown the, on New Year, though. I don't, I don't get, I, that's, that's incidental, the, the fact is it had so the New Year's played a part in the story, but it wasn't overbearing with the story. Yeah, well, uh, I don't think it was a problem. I think it was fine just to have it set on New Year and then just have an episode within it. I don't think that was a problem myself. No, I agree. Can we just talk about, about that? This isn't related to New Year's, but it's vaguely re- related to Christmas. Can we just talk about that cringy scene where we see the family 
complain about the Wi-Fi. Oh, oh. God. That, that oh. is like dad humour at its worst. <laughs> I, I, I know saw, Kidnall was it. trying to do with that scene, but it failed miserably. Because yeah, it's yeah, like... it, 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 it failed miserably because, if anything, it made you want the Dalek to succeed with its plans <laughs> to destroy all of humanity. Honestly, it, it, it felt like Muffat humour. That's how bad that scene was. Like, with it just being so, like, on the nose, yeah. smarmy, and just like, oh, 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 oh I'm so clever. It really feel like that. Ah, ah, everyone's everyone's so reliant on their devices. Do you get it? You get the joke. The, no, the that's, joke that's fucking is, funny, man. That's it's just so the way funny. they say it in oh. such an animated way. Just make, so maybe it's partly down over the way it was acted, but you can't tell me that it's the actor's fault when it was clearly written in a way that was meant to be tongue in cheek. It's just oh, yeah. no, that didn't quite work. Not for me, anyway. No, d- d- I'm sorry, Dylan. Did not quite work? It's a bit of a fucking under exaggeration, isn't it? What? <laughs> I don't, well, I don't, I don't understand the, the sentence you just said. It's That's... a bit of a fucking under exaggeration saying it doesn't quite work. It fucking falls oh, on right. its arse. <laughs> It shows, oh. that the, it shows the BBC promote anti-socialism when the kids have a negative reaction to having a conversation. The BBC are having a negative impact on our child's mind. I think people like this should be taken to court. They should uh, be like the anti- Doctor, Who. Doctor Who has an agenda. anti-internet agenda. I think uh, both that and the BBC do. I mean, the, I think Terry Nation was ahead of his time when he created the Daleks, when um, they are based on people who were all for national socialism. And the people who are, it's try, they're trying to convert people who are anti-socialists now uh, into socialists in this episode, and they have a negative reaction when they, they try to do it. And it's t- tell me I'm wrong. Come on, come on, guys, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me. I'm wrong. I mean, Jerry, Jer- 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 I, I, th- I think this is. A, I think you're completely correct, but I've got there's there's one fatal flaw in that is that this episode made me want national socialism. Because I mean, I think, I think secretly... all right, I think it's time to move on. <laughs> And we're going to, just before we give our final thoughts, we're going to talk about the production in this episode, which is the direction, uh, how well it's made, how how good it looks, the music, things like that. Uh, Do you want uh, to talk, Harry? One second, one second, one second. No, 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 Harry, I don't don't want to hear your Himmler speeches. Just... (laughs) No, 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 this has got nothing... (laughs) <laughs> listen, listen, this, this has got nothing to do with my love for national socialism. This is completely unrelated. Oh, um, <laughs> so, so you know, you know there's, there's one scene in this that made me think this is just Dalek, but shit. And it's a scene where the Dalek flies up into the air. It lands. It kills a lot of soldiers that somehow knew it was there. And then just leaves. And so... Like, yeah, What's that, the point that, in that, that could scene? be any Dalek episode, though, Harry. I don't think no, that's no, no, necessarily no, no, the no, no, no. Dalek. But, but, but I think it's worth comparing it to Dalek, because in Dalek, you get these scenes of the Dalek killing all these soldiers, and it's in like a tight, confined space, and it's like it, you know the Dalek. That actually Dalek means happen. something because of how well Christopher Eccleston's acting and how they've kind of got the emotional hook of the you know the also timeline that, and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, also. The, the, the killing of the soldiers is related to the plot, because if the Dalek gets through the soldiers, then it'll yeah. kill all the main characters. But, but in this episode, it lands, it's in like a wide open space, it's like, the, you're not feeling confined, you're not feeling isolated in any way from anywhere else. And it just kills a lot of soldiers, and there's that stupid bit where it deflects a tank no, bullet. Wait, wait, I was just about to say, that was like a, the cool moment, that was the moment I really want the praise, that was fucking brilliant. Yeah, that that looked. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't it's... expecting that. I was like, "Oh, what's how's it going to get on this one?" Just <laughs> deflect. I was like, "No, nah. yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't. I didn't my, like my, that. My, my, I didn't my like that. I thought with... it would have been on you, Harry. On you. The, the, my main issue with the with the bullets is well, the bullets, the fucking torpedoes that it fucking shoots out. Is that it sort of like unhooks its fucking lower bra? Hit things and like fucking. <laughs> what a way to describe that. But, but that's that's like the bloody uh, the comic relief Doctor Who was like they're not breasts, they're Dalek bumps. Like bumps. <laughs> <laughs> bumps. Anyway, go oh, then it, and then it fucking it like it like shoots these fucking torpedoes out of them, and it's like that was a bit stupid. To be honest. Uh, 
Yeah, I think, I think uh, with a regular yeah. Dalek, it would have looked all right, but because this is one that's meant to be made of like farm parts and scrap, it's like, oh, like we get that the Dalek is supposed to be a genius and stuff, right? But it's like, yeah, you're making torpedo launchers out of fucking yeah, fertilizer uh, like, and yeah, yeah. Hands, you know. <laughs> I thought it would have been a lot cooler as well as like I mean, I mean, I mean that's to like be fair, to be fair, dude, I, I think they do make bombs out of fertilizer. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. The fertilizer is a good explosive, but I don't know if you out of scrap metal on a farm and fertilizer you can make fucking torpedoes that can blow up tanks. Hold, hold, hold on, Dylan, have you been researching this? Are you all, right, a... all right, okay. If there are any <laughs> weapons experts watching, tell us if it's feasible to make torpedoes using fertilizer and tin cans that will blow up a british tank i mean no. i've done that in, for- I've here's, done that here's... in fortnite right but yeah so I don't <laughs> know so that. here's the looking at you isis <laughs> anyway <laughs> let's move can on I... to... we, we've not in the production now can, see before we move on to the production Dylan, can i say I, it's three things actually three things i want to say about this dial right now number one uh going back to the tank for a wee bit i think it would have been a lot better display the Dalek's power if it just took the tank shell rather than try to deflect it because I think that is the sort of ultimate comparison of a yeah, Dalek no, it's supposed a, to be a, a tank t- a tank would act, like a tank would probably actually kill a Dalek though let's be I real mean, especially I mean, a scrap it, Dalek like that yeah I mean, it would have killed that one right but I think a normal one it wouldn't have killed it but no, I still I think, think I that... think they would have I think a tank well come yeah, on yeah, an yeah, RPG yeah. kills a Dalek in remembrance of the Daleks yeah so but I'm sure it, a tank would they're like white supremacist Daleks. Right. They don't. They don't. They don't count. Um, number two, uh, I think we should all take a drink from my boy Shay for missing the sequel of Dalek Kentai. Uh, I yep. that. I that. Yeah. And number three, uh, one that really took the immersion out of it for me when I was watching it is when the Dalek laughs. I was like, yeah, that was a bit stupid. Hey, <laughs> pardon. <laughs> like, um, there's also wait. one. There's also one more. Yeah, story Dalek shouldn't one. laugh. I, I, I agree with that. <laughs> there's, 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 one more, there's one more story thing I want to bring up. Um, how come no one knows what a Dalek is? Because unless I miss that thing. In, yeah, in the... that's something I, was, I, I, I get annoyed at as well, Harry. It's like you sit with... Yeah. They were made to the wide open to the public in uh, Doomsday and stolen Earth. They, like, they, how can you not know they, what the fucking Daleks are? They literally are? fucking stole the fucking Earth in the fucking <laughs> stolen Earth. Yeah. They literally fucking nicked it and, it, and invaded the whole planet. How does no one know what a Dalek is? It's a shot. Yeah, so remember? It fucking happened. Remember I think, 5? I, I think, no. Uh, I, I, how come in general people are people are like like what the, why that's an alien aliens have been all the fucking time in fucking yeah. I mean in classic <laughs> how they got around it is most Dalek episodes weren't really on Earth or when they were it was like mostly in the future or just very small scale whereas yeah, uh, in New Who they seem to invade the fucking planet about every series now so it is just getting a bit silly and they, need, every, they need to stop no, having no, modern no, day Earth Dalek. being invaded and. Or it, and like aliens being on Earth being very public because it just means you know uh, how we're supposed to how we're supposed to take seriously these people don't know what these are at this point you know can we can we get an F in the chat for a unit who have been dismantled due to Brexit <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna set up a GoFundMe campaign in the the description below so we can get some money to get units set back up thanks guys <clears throat> can I be, I'm not so, the one who thought that was a really dumb idea like I get it he didn't want to bring in unit. No, 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 there was another um, Muffat joke, I think. It was like, oh, oh, oh Brexit, very clever, very topical. <laughs> <laughs> except, except UNIT is, like, part of the UN and not just the, not the EU. They're, like, two completely separate organizations. <laughs> and, yeah. And it also, like, like doing that, no, it just it's stops clever the complete spill. <laughs> clever. It, like, it, just, it just stops the story to have this, like, fucking phone conversation with this receptionist woman. And it just stops for about a minute, and then just goes on again. And it had nothing to do with everything else. It was it was like a very short I, I think version. It was just it was just explaining why Unit weren't in it. I think. Yeah, but who gives a shit? I don't know. I don't think I, I don't think I don't think I would watch. Brigadier it. Leftbridge Stewart gives a shit, Harry. No, um, no, he's no, no, fucking dead. Filing his grave. He's probably yeah, getting quite like tossed and turned it's, in fucking green. You, yeah, like, his like, graves yeah. are even defiled by Stephen Muffat, but you're doing even more. If like if I was if I was watching it like half a day, I was like, oh, why are you here? Like I'm not I'm not thinking about that. I don't give a shit. If you did not turn up, I'm like, okay, it's still shit episode. 
Well, I think the thing is, you know, people will see the Dalek and think, oh, I'm in awe of this lad, absolute unit, and then think, wait, where's the unit? <laughs> <laughs> but, no, like, see, it, see if um, Lethbridge Stewart said up, he just would have put five rounds rapid in him. <laughs> Fucking game right, over there. Anyway, we're actually going to move on to the production now, because we keep on being stopped from doing so. Anyway, anyway so uh, do you want to start, Harry? Yeah, um, I thought it was the shots were nice. The CGI wasn't terrible. Like, Aye, that's well, what you would, you would start on the fucking shots, would you, Harry? You can't get enough of the fucking shots. <laughs> I, 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 I. <laughs> Mate, you should have seen me watching the Leisure Hive. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, the, the shots were fine. Now, the production side is always fine for Doctor Who, unless it's like... Unless it's Warren the Deep. Sh- like, unless it... Well, no, in New Who, the production's usually fine, yeah. unless it's like... It's uh, to the centre of the TARDIS. Oh, and, uh, and fear her. And fe- oh, fe- fear her is possibly the worst looking and least competently made episode <laughs> of New Who. Oh, or sure. the return of Doctor Mysterio. Oh God. Anyway, let's let's not I... get sidetracked. Yeah. So, um, so I thought the, the the Dalek was a, a lot of it was CGI, wasn't it? Because it looked a bit crap to me. Like it, it looked very the, the, fake. The, the, I think I spotted about one actual physical on-set Dalek thing. On yeah, the back it, it looked very CGI and very fake. And ugh, I, I, I thought that yeah, was done poorly. Because not only was but, the design bad, it, didn't, it looked fake, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but other than that, the, I guess everything else was just competent. Yeah. I just wanted to mention it just because uh, I didn't think the Dalek CGI was very good, and I was a bit surprised considering how good the CGI's been for the rest of Series 11. I mean, have they run out of money or something? I don't know. Probably. They spent it all in getting the, getting the baby out of the pregnant blokes, Tommy. That's what they did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so anything else to say on the production before we move on to the final thoughts? Um, no. When it's the first time we've had a director from the Moffat era come back to direct an episode, oh, which I think... This? Yeah, it's, it's, it's Wayne Yip who did uh, Lie of the Land and Empress of Mars in Series 10. Ah, and well, they weren't bad, I don't think. You know, he's, 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 he directed, uh, the episodes he directed in Series 10 were good. Uh, he directed the two episodes of class that, you know, actually looked like you could watch them without your eyes bleeding. <laughs> well, let's just, we yeah, don't mention but, class on this channel, Jacob. Oh, yeah, gosh. but the, uh, the, the, the main issues with, with this episode come from the script and the way yeah. the Dalek looks, so... Yeah, so uh, should we move on to final thoughts now? Uh, in give a score out of ten. Would you like to start, Jacob? Um, it could have been really good. Um, honestly, the biggest flaw is we. If you cut out that thirty-minute subplot with uh, with Ryan's dad and devoted it to the Dalek being a Dalek and the Doctor and Company trying to chase it down, um, we would have had probably a, the best Dalek story since oof, I'd have to say probably since Into the Dalek. I always forget Into the Dalek exists, but yeah, Into the Dalek. Yeah, it, that, that, it, uh, that one wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't like fucking Magician's Apprentice and Witches Familiar. But yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, well, I mean, well, I mean, if you want to get technical, what was the what was the first episode of season ten called? The uh, pilot. The pilot. Yeah, well, that one didn't count. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, do you want to give your final thoughts now? Oh wait, do you finish, Jacob? No. Uh, so yeah, probably if I was giving a story a five or a six. Yeah, that's it, fair. Just it, it's it's not bad. Give it a watch, you'll and probably get some enjoyment. Too. It does have potential. Anyway, go on, Harry. Uh, possibly one of the worst things I've ever seen. Uh, zero out of ten. Okay, thanks for that fair and balanced assessment, Harry. <laughs> Would you like to go, Jerry? Uh, it shows the BBC have an incredibly racist agenda by picking the white person. <laughs> to be possessed and not the black person. <laughs> it shows that you know, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the argument Bowles Trek is going with this oh, time. Oh, that was probably um, true. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait to see really the dislike ratio a, on this video. I found it incredibly, incredibly offensive as a minority race myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a Scott. <laughs> probably fucking so edit that out it, before I get the fucking... That, uh, this is all staying in just to teach you a lesson. <laughs> Uh, that stated, <laughs> yeah, I, I did not like the political agenda. I did not like the uh, the racist agenda. Uh, to it, 
Right, uh, well, since you've had uh, two very For my serious... New Year's resolution, my resolution is to never watch this shit fucking show again unless they stop being racist and not political. <laughs> yes. All right. I'm, not, I'm, never, I'm never watching it again until she changes her fucking costume. <laughs> I, honestly, I'm very close to agreeing with you, Harry, as I really do hate it. Anyway, my thoughts on this episode, it has a lot of potential. Uh, one of the things with problems with Chibnall's script uh, in Series 11 has been not having great ideas, whereas here he actually did have a brilliant idea, but it just wasn't explored at all. It was a really novel way to do a Dalek episode, something that hasn't been done before, which, you know, is great, because uh, a lot of the time Dalek episodes come off a bit stale because, you know, they've been done to death, but this actually felt fresh. Uh, but it just wasn't exploited to its potential. It's a good idea that just wasn't used in favour of this shitty subplot about Ryan's dad, which could have been handled well and felt like it was going to be handled well, judging by how it was built up earlier in the season, with lots of, uh, you know, tell, don't show, and, um, you know, not having massively long-winded scenes about it, but they did that here, and I didn't think it was handled very well, and it kind of ruined what could have been a brilliant Dalek episode. It's probably about five out of ten, maybe six if I was being really generous, but now nah, I think five is probably fair. All right, so I'd like to thank you all for you, uh, you, you could say this episode broke new ground. It broke so much new ground. What? This episode broke so much new ground, Dylan. What, what do you mean? Is it... <laughs> I don't... <laughs> Why wasn't it called Resolution of the Daleks? Like, yeah, that would have been funny. I would have liked it more if it had been called that. Like, like they, they they don't have the title sequence to be at the beginning. They have it like they just have a title card at the very end. Which stop doing that, please. That's just ugh, yeah, that's something about a, modern. Yeah. That's something about modern TV. I hate is they don't yes, do like yeah. a title a title sequence. It's always like, oh, here's a quick intertitle and we're going because it's like. Well, no, 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 they do it in a, they do exactly the same thing we used to do in New Who, on, like, stuff like Peaky Blinders. Anyway, so, uh, thank you all for coming on, and, uh, I'll see you all back, ooh, well, quite a while for the next panel discussion, because Doctor is coming back till 2020, so, see you in a different video, oh, different well. kind of video next time. Thanks, Bye, gang. you cunts! Thanks, gang, extended fam. Oh, <laughs> I just, I just,